My theme today is resurrection again. In the last few weeks, I'm kind of going to wrap it up today, but really it's going to, it's going to be ongoing for forever because we're going to keep talking about the return of Christ because in this modern day today, you are seeing signs like you've never had before. Answer me a question. Have you ever seen fire in Newfoundland? Have you ever seen such flooding in Kentucky? Are you paying attention? Have you ever seen just evil people creating war and hate in the world? How can another nation invade another nation and kill people, innocent people? I want to suggest to you it's better be a sign of the times. Because if that's the world that we're living in today, Jesus better come soon. Because I don't want to live in this world. I'm not sure about you. So this resurrection, again, is the bottom line is this. Jesus would have suffered through everything we're talking about in his incarnate nature as a human. Absolutely. To the point where they actually put him on a cross. What's worse than being on a cross? Yeah, you may have gone through war. You may have experienced a bomb. You may have had COVID. You may have had illnesses. You may have had violence. You may have had a gun pointed at you. Sure, you may have been killed in some shape or form. You may have lost loved ones through tragic means. Absolutely, you may have gone through a tsunami, maybe an earthquake, all of the above. But let me tell you something. When Christ hung on a cross, that was for all of our experience. No matter how bad death might have been, you will live again. Because it's the resurrection power I'm talking about. And how many of you recognize that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you? <laughs> it doesn't matter what they try to do on this earth to you. It doesn't even matter if you're worried about the mark of the beast. We're going to talk about it very shortly. I'll remind you what that means. Because there ain't no mark except the mark of God upon you in the name of Jesus. God's got to mark you with a stamp of his blood and seal you with the power of his Holy Spirit. And you are a child of God no matter what politicians say, no matter what doctors say, no matter what illnesses say, no matter what circumstances say, no matter what wars may say, no matter what the gun says pointing at your forehead. You are a child of God. You were bought with a price. You have been paid with eternal redemption because you have been adopted into the family of God. There is a down payment on your life that nobody can take. Somebody say amen. amen. So don't listen to the rhetoric and the deception that Adam and Eve would have brought to us by listening to the serpent. He's called Satan. And he's deceiving the very world today in greater deception than you can ever imagine. And this generation better pay attention because you are being deceived even on your godly social platform. platform. Because your mini God, your worldly God, called an iPhone or a cell phone or a computer phone. You think that leads the way with educating you and giving you perspective on life is actually distracting you from the power of your resurrection authority. Are you hearing me? You're putting your trust in manliness, in technology, in earthliness, and you're losing track of bowing your knees every day and giving homage and honor to the greatest technological power, social media source they can ever be. And when Roger's turned the po when Roger lost power two weeks ago, you recognize who really is power. God never shuts his power off. He is power. His power will never shut off like Roger's. Turn the lights off for me, everybody. Turn all the lights off for a second. Turn all the lights off. Kevin, go in the hallway. Turn every light off. And let me show you something. Turn every light off. Turn every light off. Do you see how dependent we are on man's so-called power? Doesn't the place look different? Doesn't the place look different? Doesn't it feel different? There is a sense of absence of this kind of authority we have as humans because we think we have power. We think we own the world. We think we know everything. And the moment we lose the power, by the way, that came from God himself, who gave us the wisdom to introduce power so we can have light. But before we can put a light switch on, it was God who says, let there be light. Oh, somebody help me now. I'm not even going to my notes yet, Pastor Lincoln. Are we in trouble or what? Because 1 Thessalonians tells me this. It's in your bulletin, on the bulletin. It says the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. And I suspect there was some thunder and lightning on that day. 
And I suspect that though they sealed the tomb so that nobody can open it, I suspect that they, Jesus would have walked right through those rocks. Somebody say hallelujah. Did you know the tomb did not have to be opened for Jesus to be resurrected? Do you know the only reason why it was open so that us silly human beings can believe that he was really resurrected? Can you imagine 2,000 years later, all the doubters saying, yeah, sure your Jesus rose from the dead, but the tomb is still sealed. That's a wise God. But you have the same resurrection power. Now, I don't have any notes. We're going to go to my slides quickly. Leave the lights off, but leave the power slide on. The next slide will show you that the first title slide. Go back to the first title slide, the resurrection power. This one here. Christ's resurrection that we'll partake of in this understanding here. We are not partaking of a dead Jesus. We are not partaking of, as often as you do from the Gospels and in, in 1 Corinthians chapters 11, we are not partaking of some dead Jesus or trying to remember, oh, poor Jesus, he hung on a cross and shed his blood. Oh, poor Jesus. We're talking about power. And do you know how power came? Blood had to come out of his veins. Anybody with me now? The power had to be shown because blood had to be poured out of his veins. It's when that blood was poured out of his vein, there was resurrection power. It's when that body was tattered and beaten and broken. You see, we think that's weakness. We think when somebody overcomes us, right, and, and destroys his body, we think it's weakness. No, that's because you're beating your physical so you can experience the eternal of your resurrection body. And this experience is the resurrection power. Because Jesus says, I will rise again. We are celebrating not his death and his burial. We are celebrating his resurrection. Are you hearing me now? When we do as often as we do every month, and in some cases every day, if in the Catholic churches, every service that you go to, no problem. As often as you do, we're not celebrating his death and his burial. We are celebrating his resurrection. First Baptist Church, understand what that means. Because why we are celebrating his resurrection is because is our soon resurrection again. There's going to be a second resurrection. Did you know that? Right? And guess where that comes from? That's going to be you. You will experience another resurrection when your body will be transformed into the glorious body that God has planned for you. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, how many of you want to die? It's a good thing I left my gun at home. Because you will die. Whether on this earth or when Christ comes back. This body shall be transformed. This mortal shall put on immortality, 1 Corinthians 12, 15. And this corruption shall put on incorruption. We will die. That's the good news, amen? But when we die, we will live again. We will live for eternal resurrection power. That is the power we have in these emblems right now. So when we talked about revelations, and we talked about the mark of the beast, and we talked about the rapture and the tribulation and all this in the last few weeks, let me remind you that the mark of the beast does not come from the mark of Satan. The mark of the beast comes from the Antichrist who the false prophet will introduce, give me the next slide, will introduce to give an identification. Nope, the, the one with the mark of the beast and, and the Antichrist. When you get that mark, it's an identifier just to a world system that will try to distract you that ultimately the only mark that matters is the mark of Jesus Christ upon your forehead. Do you have the blood stamped on your forehead? Is the blood transfusion experience in your life? You understand? Because the mark of the beast, as you know, from Revelation 13, it will not be part of your life if you are a fall of Christ. Say, say, tell the person next to you, I'm not going to get no mark, baby. I'm not getting no mark of the beast. Don't believe the lie. All this written books, making lots of history books, it's a life in the pit of hell. Because by chapter 13, you are either in heaven with Christ or you've been resurrected by the power of the cross. You will not receive a mark of the beast. Pastor Gibbs can put his life on that line. It's not until you get to chapter 13 that the, the beast comes out. The dragon brings forth the beast, beast out of the ocean and he brings forth the false prophet, the second beast out of the earth. And those three is going to make havoc on the world. You shall be in paradise. So don't listen to the rhetoric. Amen? But my point is this. Get the mark of God. It's permanent. You need the mark of God. 
upon you. Amen? And the next slide will show you how this works out for all of us because we are recognizing that in this moment, we need a permanent mark. Go to the next slide. Permanent marker sealed with the what? With the Holy Spirit. And how is it sealed? It's sealed because of in him. Who is in him? Because Christ himself has made the propitiation or the representation or he has fulfilled, okay, a place for us so we can be redeemed because of what he has done for us. Ephesians chapter 1 is a down payment. And you have been downpaid with the blood of Christ. So therefore you have been bought with the expensive blood of Jesus. But because of that, you have life. And you will have life abundantly and... Simple message. Simple message. The prophetic word came from Daniel chapter 9 verse 27. Remember that? Daniel 9 27. Okay? Y'all should know that by now. Right? Y'all should know Matthew 24, 15 and 21. I'm, I'm talking real fast because this is echoing, echoing the same thing over and over again. Daniel gets a prophecy, 927, right? And the prophecy says what? He says what? When you see the abomination of desolation shows up. And how does it show up? It shows up through the Antichrist, right? And then Jesus echoes the same words of Daniel in Matthew 24, verse 15. He says, when you see the abomination spoken of by Daniel, that's Matthew 24, verse 15, 21. I'm going fast because you should know this by now, right? Three passages that affirms that the only time you've got to be worried about is when the revelation of the Antichrist shows up. Is he here yet? I think two weeks ago we assumed he was somewhere in Jamaica. And then Nova Scotia was competing. No, I think he's born in Nova Scotia. Who cares? All we know is this. There is coming a world system of controlled order, of economic power, that will have a global way of identifying every human being that will need to live in, in, in accordance with the global order that will come from this individual. He's called the Antichrist. But if you're a follower of Jesus, it's not Antichrist, it's just Christ. If you fall of Jesus, forget the ante. It's just Christ and God's permanent mark on you. So remember, the middle of the tribulation is what prepares us for the rapture. It could be at the beginning, pre-tribulation. Pre the first three and a half years, there's no biblical affirmation for that. But we know Daniel, Jesus, and Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. Keep that verses in mind. I'm going to say it again. I'm repeating it over and over again. Daniel 9, 27, Matthew 24, 15, 21, and Revelation 7, 14. You read those three, and that tells you in the middle of the tribulation, something is going to happen that's going to affirm the prophetic word God gave to Daniel that Christ affirmed, and Revelation gives us the foresight for it. John on the Isle of Patmos, he got the foresight, and here we are now anticipating in this modern time rumors of wars, earthquakes, famines, pestilences in diverse places. People are lovers of themselves, boastful. Are you hearing me now? Children rebellious against parents. Are you hearing me now? All of the above, is it happening in our times? We are the last generation closest to the end. Go to the next slide. You'll see what I'm talking about. Go to the next slide, and we're going to wrap it up real quickly. The next slide tells you this. It tells you this. The book of Revelation is the apocalypse. John was commissioned in chapters 1, right? The letters to the church in chapters 2 and 3, right? The visions of things to come in 4 to 11. And then finally, the great tribulation and the end of the evil is in chapters 12 to 22. My point is this, is you will not, if you are fall of Christ, experience any of the last half of tribulation because we shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Go to the next slide. Let me excite you with this one now. Let me, let me give you some excitement, okay? Are you ready for the rapture? Go to the next slide. The next slide. Follow me here. Follow me. I'm, I'm, I'm going exactly as my, as my note shows you here. The rapture. What does the scripture teach? The dead will rise. Stay in the rapture. Read my, read my, read my, go to the previous one. There you go. Follow me. Listen carefully in the back there. Follow me now. Follow my words, okay? Now, the rapture, the dead will see, will rise first. Living will be caught up second. That's why you need to be die so you have resurrection power. Because even though you're alive, those who are dead will rise first at the rapture when that takes place. And you who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. You have to die with everyone else. So when we're all caught up, whether I'm in Rwanda, whether you're in Nova Scotia, whether you're in Toronto, whether you're in Brazil, whether you're in America, it doesn't matter. We shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And we shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Are you anticipating in this 2022 season, the possibility is you are the potential last generation. 
that will experience this worldly Nancy story that they have denied for 2,000 years. And you can keep denying it all you want, but open your eyes and see what's happening and pay attention because Maranatha, Jesus is coming sooner than you think. Go to the next slide. Now, here it is. The rapture, I want to be ready for it. Why? Because true believers will be raptured. It's eminent and sudden. The closer to the end, the worse signs will be. The church will escape God's judgment. The world is left without the church. I should put, the world is left without the Holy Spirit. The Antichrist will rule the world. Christ will be preparing for his second coming. Not the rapture, but his second coming when we, in, the, in, in Revelation chapter 7, are the host of every tongue, every tribe, every nation, is caught up in the second uh, time that John goes to heaven, he sees the host of us in heaven. In chapter 7, long before the great tribulation takes place, in, from chapters 8. So, my last two slides. You'll have to die to see Christ again you'll have to go into your own tomb and you'll have to bury your sinfulness, bury your hates and dislikes, bury your judgments and be dead to every evil that's prevailing you in your life. You have to kill them all and let them die and you too will have to die physically and mentally. So you have to enter your tomb when that time comes but you will see Christ again in that fateful, great getting up morning. In that fateful, great getting up morning. Is anybody paying attention? Are you receiving this? Because my last slides leave this for you. This is Jesus speaking. Are you ready to meet him? Are you ready to meet him? Bow your hearts in prayer. A serious moment, Lord, when we captivate in this moment away from the distractions and the attractions of our world, away from family and busyness and work and all that we've done all through the week and preparing for the next week to come. Just in this fleeting moment, we have an opportunity to give focus to our spiritual authority in you because we need to know that whether tomorrow or the next day, if you shall come, or if we die, we want to make sure our book is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. For those listening online, for those in this sanctuary, Lord, we are challenging each other, including myself. Oh God, forgive me of my sin. Forgive us of our sin. We acknowledge we've come short of your glory time and time again. And we have forsaken you a time as well because we are caught up in a materialistic world chasing after man's success. Help us, I pray today, to turn our lives completely over to you, knowing that the end is near. And I pray for a full belief and following of Jesus Christ as our Savior in this moment for everyone listening to my voice. And you don't have to raise your hands, but you can raise your hands in your heart because God sees your heart. Raise your hands in your heart as high as you want to be, or you can raise it if you want just in general. It doesn't matter. But for every hand who is raised, God is seeing it. Oh God, I pray for a transformative power into the lives of everyone whose hands are raised inside of their hearts. Transform them now, I pray, to become the ambassadors you've called them to be. You have adopted them into your family, and I pray you'll give them that resurrection power in anticipation when you shall call them with that trumpet sound. We partake now of this communion emblems, Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you will bring them into the ushering of an understanding of what this means now for us to partake of your resurrection in this reflective moment as often as we do in remembrance of you. Come, Lord Jesus. Come and fill our rooms in our hearts and give us the transformation and the transfusion of your blood inside our bodies now, we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.